Since doing the video on Le Sharp X68000, oh, you know, Le Sharp X68000 that I own, <laughs> even if it's basically nothing but a potentially buggered motherboard in a case at this point, something odd's happened. Turns out if you show off some good electronics on your channel and name drop capacitors and batteries and all that, while at least looking like you know what you're talking about, you'll be invited to look at some tech. And recently I had an offer that I couldn't pass up. The lovely people at Monster Joysticks have sent me their latest product to review, a mini Monster Joystick in kit form. Now I'll stress this immediately, they sent me it and wanted me to see what I thought and I'm not getting paid for this. As you all know my technological expertise is frankly outstanding, whether it's including pictures of a system diagram that includes a USB hub when talking about the IBM PC5150, or literally having to refuse paid requests of games because they were just too technical and complex for me to understand, I think we can all agree that my tech nous is as strong as my pronunciation of the letter R. Retro Man Cave, Tech Moan, Miss Mad Lemon, I am none of these people. However this weakness can be a strength. I can look at this here kit and joystick from the perspective of a casual who can not only tell you how good it is, but also if it's easy as Raspberry Pi to set up, or if you're going to end up like Homer Simpson trying to put together a grill. So let's have a look at this joystick and see what it's all about. Monster, monster, monster. Now you may be familiar with monster joysticks for their all-in-one kits that give you everything in one go, they provide you with a kit that allows you to construct a solid quality arcade stick that you can also shove a Raspberry Pi into. The products are usually quite well reviewed, especially because you actually get decent parts to do things with, like a proper clicky Sanwa micro switch joystick and authentic Sanwa arcade buttons. Sanwa being a long standing Japanese name in the world of arcade buttons and sticks that's known for quality gear. This project, however, is different. It's a proper retro gaming joystick made for your 8 bit systems that'll work with any computer or console that takes a generic 9 pin plug, meaning the Atari 2600, 7800, and ST, the Sega Master System, Amstrad CPC, Commodore 64, and Commodore Amiga. I'm not able to test this myself, but I presume that this would also work with a ZX Spectrum so long as you have a Kempston interface for it, or with a USB adapter with a male 9 pin plug that could perhaps allow you to play arcade games that only require one or two buttons. The Mini Monster Joystick comes with a clear shell and a choice between Cherry Red, Ice Blue and Stealth Black buttons and stick. I have the Cherry Red version and the cost is £54.99. You can get a basic version for £34.99 as well, with own brand controls instead of the imported Sanwa parts. Now I had intended to put a whole sequence of me putting this together in here, but it was quite amateurish, so you'll just have to contend with what little I got. Anyway, the Mini Monster Joystick is for the most part pretty easy to assemble, even for cack handed donkeys like myself. There's a guide included that tells you everything you need to know, a convenient wiring loom so that you don't have to think too much about what goes where and all that. It's easy to follow. And hey, the guide actually features words and paragraphs, a rare sight in this era of nothing but bloody IKEA hieroglyphics. The one fiddly part is the T-nuts and bolts that you have to put in to tighten the case up properly. You've got to make sure the nut is in place before dropping your screw down the hole, and there's a definite possibility that said nut could fall inside of your case when doing so. This isn't a big deal, there's a big hole in the back for the actual joystick port itself, and some non-violent shaking will release the nut from its cage, but doing this could result in some mild swearing. However once you've done it, you're left with a nice looking and sturdy unit. Ultimately I was able to put the whole thing together in about half an hour or so, and honestly the most strenuous part of the ordeal was trying to remove the protective covers on all the panels. I really like the look of the finished unit, it's got a nice sheen to it. There is a certain aesthetic to these things, they certainly have an assembled look, but it's a good assembled look, with solid parts and screws that undoubtedly command a certain respect, it looks fresh out the pages of a Haynes manual. Nice and chunky, but also compact. It looks like it might be a bit edgy and difficult to really grasp, but having conducted the Vega Plus Memorial paper test on it, I'm happy to report that try as you might, this won't cut a sheet of A4 up, so it's comfortable enough to hold. And I like the nice rounded panel too on the top, it's a solid finish. 
Still, the real standout is obviously the arcade controls itself. There's just something about a good arcade stick, isn't there? These Sanwa products are the sort where really, you don't even need to test them to know that they're going to be good. They're shiny, they won't get smudged by fingerprints easily, they feel just right, and that joystick, ah oh yeah, it clicks so good. Everything about it looks dependable and like it's going to last. But as much as I can take fancy shots of it and admire the control ball, the buttons that take me back to a time when less cabs were in disrepute and all of that, obviously the proof is in the playing. I'm testing the joystick on two platforms primarily. The Sega Master System, by way of the Mega Drive, will be useful for basic testing. And yes, this is sort of compatible with Mega Drive 2, obviously, although you are kind of limited to games that only require two buttons and don't need a start button. I'll also be testing it out on Amiga, because this stick has a very awesome parlour trick that I've not mentioned yet. I tested the stick out on a few Master System games, mostly arcade ones, and yeah, it's good. The joystick feels really nice in the hand. It's got a short throw and it doesn't miss any inputs, especially after it's been broken in a bit. The buttons are absolutely fine. Basically, um, I didn't have issues with any of the games that I played, whether I had the joystick on a table or on my lap or whatever. I'm generally used to those classic old gaming joysticks that require massive yanks in order to get any movement at all. So this, which requires just a light touch, is a whole different and much better ball game. If there is one thing I would say, it's that the top panel may not exactly be the most comfy thing to rest a wrist on, but then you wouldn't normally be resting a wrist on an arcade stick anyhow. Shouldn't you be towering over it in fact? This is soon remedied of course. If you're unfamiliar with an arcade stick for home use, you'll soon get used to it with this joystick. I'm generally a lot more comfortable with pads for home use, but this is undoubtedly going to be my go-to stick for anything that it can be used with going forward. The authentic arcade feel that the top quality stick and buttons provide just can't be topped, especially for any arcade style game. And then of course, there's that aforementioned parlour trick. Mainly this is something for your Amiga, C64 and what have you. Games where the joystick only had one fire button. The Mini Monster has a little switch on the back. If you click this switch, then the joystick maps the up direction to the second fire button. This is of course a game changer. Most computer platformers back in the day had you pressing up to jump, which was never ideal. But now, with this, you can play all these classics on the actual computer itself, with jump assigned to a button. It may not be authentic, but it sure as hell controls better. Like the difference this makes in games such as Great Gianna Sisters, Turrican and James Pond is mind blowing. And of course a joystick like this combined with sensible soccer, oh, that's definitely going to work out great. If you've not really had an arcade stick before, then this is a good way to get comfy with one. It's a very solid bit of kit. Now the price of £55 is pretty high for a retro joystick of course, especially for one that is built for quite old machines these days. But you get what you pay for. The end product is certainly better made than, well, a fair bit of the original sticks that were around at the time, not to mention that even with the best sticks of the day, the failure rate is starting to get worryingly high. I mean, they're old after all. You can of course find a lot of very good sticks out there with USB solutions that will let you do this on a PC to your heart's content, but this is properly compatible with the real thing, and the 9-pin setup makes it a good choice for a lot of different machines. Sure, it would be nice to have a third button, and then this joystick would be fully Mega Drive ready, but perhaps that's something for another day. It's a good choice for those who like to stick with their original machines, and it speaks well to the quality of Monster's other products. I hereby proclaim it worthy of a full thumb up, and say that yes, even the least technically apt people will have no trouble putting this thing together, and getting a whole lot of enjoyment out of it. Bye for now. Many thanks for watching, if you like the video then do please like, subscribe and all of that. Also special thanks to these members of the community who contribute through Patreon. Adam Schaefer, Alex Stoko, Alexander Jazeri, Andrew Dalton, Andy Capt, Daniel Briggs, 
Daniel David Taylor, David Rose, Dustin Cooper, Gary Pinkett, George Newton, Graf and Blackpool, Ian Roberts, James Id, James Loveridge, Jason Durso, Jason Goy, Jason Stevens, Jace Alexander, Josh Jensen, Lee Norris, Mark Greaves, Martin Pataki, Mike's Games Room, Morton Scunin, Nanette McCrone, Nicholas Tristan, Ola Fulbean, Peter Jack, Peter Sidorn, Phil Taprog, Piotr Margell, Pocky Southmaid, Rachel Maxwell, Romeo, Ryan Burford, Sammy Lee, Samuel Victor, Scott Coulter, Seth Robinson, Simon Gulliver, Stephen Warner, Yucca Operator, and Zach Roach.